CC here at Impact Gospel Ministries. Each week we try to bring you meaningful content to challenge you and help you grow in your faith in under an hour for those of you who are time pressed. And this week we're changing things up a bit. I have asked a guest to join us today. We have Cedric Vassal, one of our elders in the church, who's also been around for a long time serving the Lord. Good evening, Cedric. Good evening, Gavin. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. How has it been so far? It is, uh, it is challenging, mm -hmm. but it's a blessing. It is a blessing. Amen. It's a blessing. Well, yes. thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm excited about the conversation we're going to have, and I hope our viewers will be blessed and also you know, challenged to grow deeper into God and, and seek His face in what, all that they do. Amen. 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 Would you like to just say a prayer for us to get started tonight? I ask that God would bless everything we're doing here tonight. Yes, most definitely. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your blessing. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, of speaking to the world tonight, Lord. And, and, and so, Father, we just want to thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Lord, for those that are that are hurting, those that are looking, those that are searching tonight. Lord, I pray that as we speak according to your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, that many will come to know and to hear your wonderful word. Father, I pray that they will find hope and peace tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very good. Very good. So for those people who are joining us for the first time this week, maybe we have been on a journey talking about how we can renew our minds so that we can experience the power of God in our lives. And not just in church, but in our families, in our workplaces, in our social circles. It's important that we do not try to confine God to the four walls of the church. And so that's right. an overview of what we talked about last week we looked at recognizing the power of our praise. Praise is important. We can't forget that. We are recognizing the power of our agreements. As Christians, what we don't want to do is agree with lies or false doctrines because there's power in what we agree with. We actually put the weight of our belief behind the things that we agree. We also okay. want to remind ourselves of God's word. We do not want to be lax in this area, be students of the word, and realizing that we are co-laborers with God. And God is wanting to not just work for us, but with us and through us in everything that we're doing. So the question I want to ask you, Cedric, to start off the conversation. In your opinion, what is the difference between God doing things for me versus through me? <laughs> <laughs> God do this for me, God do this for them, but maybe God doesn't always want to do it for you all the time. What do you think about that? I, I honestly think that uh, there, there are times that, uh, that uh, we, um, we want God to do it for us. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 look at the, I look at the scriptural, and uh, uh, and, the, and the, the Bible tells me that um, that there are times that we as as believers we want God to do this, but we don't. We forget to we forget that um, everything that God promises us, there's condition to it. Mm -hmm. There's condition to it. Gosh. God said if. Right? If, if so, I want I want God to do it for me. Mm -hmm. But what God said to do, I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> so I, I, I was I was considering about that this past week here because of a message I preached, and and sometimes what happened, I knew what God is saying to me. Mm -hmm. So if I have to pray for myself, then I have to deal with God with it. Yes. Because I cannot bypass God. Mm -hmm. I can't bypass him because he is, he's the one that's going to give it to me. 
So what I do, I come to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. See, I, I come to you and I ask you, Brother Gavin, can you please pray for me? Because I really need this to happen in my life. Mm -hmm. Or I really need, do I need, uh, say, for instance, I'm, 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 I'm looking for a job. Right. I really need a job. So I want you to pray for me. Mm -hmm. But God, I prayed and God said, hey, Cedric, there's something in your life that you need to get rid of. You have to get rid of it. You, in other words, you have to empty your hand for me to fill it up. That's very good. Very good. See, but you're saying, well, Lord, this thing, I used to this thing in my hand. If I, if I put it away, then my hand is going to feel empty. So my, my thought is that, yes, how does it, you, when, when God wants to do things through me, I, God, I have to allow myself for God to use me in his, his way. Yes, and we also have a part to play. There's parts for us to play. And we have a part to play. And this is where we come back to that my relationship with God is very important. Mm-hmm. Because if God is going to use me, then my relationship is have to be um, lined up with God when God speaks to me. So when God wants to do it through me, he, he's going to do it his way. Yeah, that's true. His way. Now, the flesh says, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, we, this is where we, we, we struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. As believers, this is where we struggle. We, we don't struggle with God. We don't struggle that God exists. We struggle in obedience to God. Amen. Amen. Right? We struggle with obedience. I think you're you're very right. We you've nailed some of the reasons why we sometimes like to push it push it off on someone else or leave all of the responsibility on God. And we do actually see in the scripture an example where Jesus was not happy with his disciples when they did that. So I would like for us to read uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 40. I have the New Living Translation. But here's an example of, of the disciples putting all the responsibility on God and him not necessarily being happy with it. So look at this, starting in verse 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High winds were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion and the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? To me, that's very interesting because maybe we would think, well, they went and they took their problem to Jesus they believed that he could do something about it, so that must be faith. But yet Jesus was not pleased with that. So what should the disciples have done differently in the storm to act in faith like how Jesus wanted them to? See, it's, it's interesting that uh, they were right there mm -hmm. in the storm. They, no, a matter of fact, let's see back up. They were right there with Jesus. Yes. They, they have seen everything that Jesus have done. But they, at this point, they were, Jesus said, go across. And remember, now, they, they were following Jesus' example. Jesus said, go across. Now, when, when they went, when they started to go across, all of a sudden, guess what? The storm developed right there. Mm -hmm. We many of us tonight would say, you know, it should be those men. They were right there. 
So there is no reason at all why they would have any kind of a fear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a, as a, and it, yeah, even as a Christian, there's no reason why they should have a fear because they have just been with Jesus. And, and Jesus said, look at this one too. Jesus said, go across, I'm coming. So obviously Jesus would, would be close by in the, in the surrounding. Mm -hmm. But that did not, that did not stop them from fear overrun them. That's very true. Right? It's here. Now the question is, in 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 our generation, mm -hmm. in our generation, what would stop us from exercise? Many of us have faith, right? Why well, every everyone have faith? <laughs> because the Bible said, according to the measure of your faith. So Man. some people faith is bigger than <laughs> all their yes. Than, yeah, you know, but. The faith that we have, what would hinder us from exercising it and I think to the fullest? Not just not just exercise, but exercise it to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And I think you said it. So fear is a big, big part of it. Fear. Mm -hmm. You know, fear of being criticized. Yeah. You know, like oh, there's one one the time we're in a, that's some class or, and and the, the teacher was saying one of the most underrated um, ministry is interpretation. Mm -hmm. Interpretation. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost speaks. Yes. And the Holy Ghost speaks to you. But you sit there and you wouldn't say nothing because what? You're afraid. <laughs> you're afraid I might get it wrong. You're afraid people might think you're acting in self. You're afraid that all of these different things. Yeah, you're right. All of this shows up and they said, wait a second. No, I'm not going to say anything. So, so now you walk on the service and you're, you're, you're both mad at yourself and disappointed at the same time because you're saying, well, God spoke to me. And, and then all of a sudden, the worst part of it, if, some, if, if you don't do it and the Lord moved to somebody else mm -hmm. and somebody else repeat the exact thing that the Lord <laughs> placed in. Yeah. You don't want to be in that position. You don't want to be in that position because now you find out that you're fighting against the very God that you're praising. Yeah, I, you know, I think of these disciples, yes, I think they were in faith. I also wonder if, you know, did it ever occur to them that maybe Jesus wanted them themselves to calm the storm? Did they think that maybe they were supposed to speak to the storm? Like Jesus was clearly expecting them to do something but they just did they never think of it or did they maybe were they too afraid to do it i wonder uh th th that's a, that's something that again we we encounter and and we still have to go in the practical because we are no different from the disciples uh, uh of uh, in in their time exactly right you know uh good night brother david good night sister lou good night uh um see what that it's sister Jackie. Yeah. God bless you. Us, yes. All right. So, <laughs> but the, the the point with, with them, why the fear? Mm -hmm. And he said, Man, no, man, these guys they should have known that the Lord would be close by. And so we look at them, but then we come back to us then. Mm -hmm. No, today. Because that's what I always do. I always look at the disciple past, and then I look at our present. Oh, you know, is, is fear still a part of our hinder runs today? I would say very much so. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Um, Jesus, Jesus said, uh, I think it was in, in Matthew... Uh, in Matthew 18, Jesus said, when you, um, a matter of fact, let me read it because I, I know sometimes I jumped ahead of that one. So in Matthew, uh, Matthew 18, mm -hmm. 
very, very um, well-known scripture. Very, it's a favorite scripture for many, uh, for many believers. So in verse nineteen, he says that. Um, uh, in nineteen, said again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. A part of agreement. Yes. Agreement. <laughs> we were just talking about that last week, how there is power in agreement. And it's There's power. We can agree together how much more. See, the, the thing about in agreement that when you come together, even, well, with, let's, let's pick out a local church. Mm -hmm. As a local church, when we come together, um, we come with, with uh, we should come with one heart. Right. One desire. One motive, but the enemy, the enemy always able to do one thing, to separate believers, mm -hmm. to separate believers. He always find a way to get in between. And sometimes we don't realize how detrimental that is because we want to be in agreement with each other. Uh, it, and that is so true. If you, if, if you, if you, when you realize, a matter of fact, let me, I don't want to smile on that one because it's very, very serious. When, when we come together as a, as a, as a church, mm -hmm. as a believer, okay, when, when we pray, right, we should pray in our, in agreement. Yes. Okay. If there's a need, if there's a need. Mm -hmm. We pray in in agreement. But take for instance a finance for a church. I'm going to throw some stuff in. Finance for a church. Yep. If if the if the church going through a financial struggle, does everybody really stay on board and say, you know what, well, let's work together and let's uh, until this thing over, mm -hmm. or do we start to pick it apart? Yeah. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is that? That person that and that person. So all of a sudden what? Instead of we have unity, we have this unity. Yes, exactly. See, so, so, the, so the key of, of Jesus talking about agreement, there's power in agreement. What, 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 what did it say? We're two or three? Yeah, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Mm-hmm. So I, I always said, and, and, and I heard it many times, if, you, if you're looking for revival in a church, yes. don't wait until the whole church decide to have a revival because you will never get it. <laughs> but if you can find you, people who agree and they can stand together in unity, mm -hmm. that's when things started to happen. In agreement. I, I realize we like this is very good, especially you know, just last week we were talking about recognizing the power of our agreement. I just realized we didn't even really mention the the points we were talking about for this week. But oh, okay. We're good. It's good because we we started into it. So we we talked about the storm and we talked about, you know, the disciples being afraid, maybe not realizing there's something for them to do. So that's part of point one which is that we have to identify our storms. You know, sometimes we have storms that come in because God said, go right, and we took a left. And sometimes we have storms that come because we are in the middle of the will of God. Like you were saying, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. It was God's will for them to go to the other side. So the storm yep. was not from God. And we have to recognize the difference between them so we can respond accordingly. So yes, we have, you know, identifying our storms. The second thing we're going to talk about is 
this idea of binding and loosing, which always causes controversy, so that will be fun. And the third one we're going to talk about is pressing through with perseverance, how too many times we pray and give up too soon. So, so this is good. We talked about our storms and agreement and, and Jesus you know, he requires things of us just like he required them of the disciples. I do want to uh, touch this topic of binding and loosing, which we know has been abused by some circles. Yeah. There, people are referring to Matthew 16, 19, and I'm using the Passion Translation just for, uh, to highlight some differences here. It says, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm, to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. So some people take that to mean, name it and claim it. You know, I get to tell God what to do. And that's really not what we're doing. You know, we are talking about an agreement, binding and loosing, and you can jump in here in a second. It's more of us coming into agreement with the kill kingdom realm Agreeing what is on in heaven should be here on earth, and what isn't the case in heaven shouldn't be the case here on earth. So, you know, what do you think? Like, what are some examples of bad situations or problems that bother us on earth but aren't in heaven and need to be bound? Uh, I, I tell you what, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to share one of my own personal story Very with, with, it, with, uh, with, with that. There was several years ago, I was, uh, I was going through a financial, I probably won't call it financial storm. Mm -hmm. I would see that. But in that time, I started to pray. Mm -hmm. And I asked, asking the Lord, Lord, I need your help because you know what? My, my bills were piling up and uh, there was no way out and, and one day, while I was praying, the Lord said, trust me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Trust me. Now, this, is, this was interesting. Because from that day, for up until about three weeks later, yeah, from that day, every time I knelt down to pray, and I started to open my mouth about finance, <laughs> I could hear the <laughs> same word, trust me. Mm -hmm. Trust me. I'm driving down the road and I, you know, sometimes you, you're talking to somebody and you, you try to sneak away to say something to them. Well, I was doing that with God. I was driving down the road and I was praying and I was thanking God. Then all of a sudden, I just sort of bring it in and said, Lord, you know, and God said, trust me. Mm -hmm. So I was locked into a zone that I couldn't, I could pray about everything else. But, but I could but, not pray about this one thing, the mm -hmm. finance. Every time I opened my mouth, it doesn't matter what kind of prayer I was praying, God said, trust me. And I said, and I'm, and I'm honest with you, I struggled. Mm -hmm. I struggled, I struggled because I would feel much more confident if I could pray out my heart to the Lord and lay it out all my financial problem before the Lord. But God said, no, trust me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know if I, if I can really say that day I, I, I thought I give in or what, but about three weeks later, I was I was in an accident uh, a couple of years uh, um, earlier, mm -hmm. and I, and uh, I got a call on the on the Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening. I was going downtown, and the, the, there was a lawyer office, and the lawyer said, "Hey, Cedric," he said we have a settlement for you here for your accident. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't get any lawyer that time for it. So <laughs> I didn't have to call a lawyer. So I said, I was going downtown. You know, I, I make it fast. I was on a low-level bridge when the lawyer called me, and he was in the Sun Life building okay. downtown. Yeah. 
So I went, he said, if you can get here within 15 minutes and we can talk. I went there in 15 minutes and, and he said, this is the offer. Uh, would, you like, would you accept it? I said, no, I want to make, uh, I want to make a counter offer. He said, if, I, if you make a counter offer, in other words, then you can't get a check until tomorrow evening. I said, that's okay. Okay. So I make a counter offer and he came back with it in the morning and said, if you, you got to be here by two o'clock to receive a check. Now I got a check and that check paid off all my bills and have some money left over. Interesting. Now, this is what I said. When God, if, if God, if, if God tell you, see, when you get close to the Lord, and if the Lord said, do this and you do it, mm -hmm. he he know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He know he's doing. So the question, is, the question is that how do we trust God, or uh, in 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 a, in a time when we have to persevere? Right. When you when when you are in the middle of the sea, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of the sea, right, and and all you can see is darkness, and God is saying, "Trust me." Right. God is not even giving you the outlet that you can go and you can spread out and you can cry and all of that. No, God is saying, hey, you know what? Trust me. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when I come out of that, it makes me a better person. It get, make me, a, a, allow me to, that my faith grow in, the, in that three week period. My faith grows because I see that God is able to do whatever he, he asks. And, you know, it, it didn't even happen right away. Sometimes it takes a period of time, right? Yes. Yes. God will allow it to happen. And he would, he, he's not just going to give you one of those free rides that you get it and you jump off and you're gone. But no, he will allow you to, to learn for it. Anything God does in your life, mm -hmm. we learn from it. Yes. There's, there's a process, right? There's a process. There's a process. We live in a culture that's very, very microwave. We like everything instant at our fingertips. No trying, no waiting, no process just right now. But the kingdom does not necessarily work that way. Sometimes we have to persist. Sometimes we have to wait. You know, it's the same with yep. prayer sometimes, you know. We, we might pray, or we might declare, we might ask like you were doing, but we don't see it immediately or we hear not right now, or no, or wait, or trust me. And sometimes people become offended at God and they, they start to think other things. But we have to realize this is a part of our walk. This is something that God wants it, it, to be yeah. comfortable with. Yeah, go ahead. And, the, and the, the other part of it too, Brother Gavin, is that I can pray the longest prayer in the world. Mm -hmm. I can pray the loudest prayer. But every prayer that I pray, it also depends on my relationship mm -hmm. and what I'm willing to give in or give up. Because the closer I get to God, is the more he's revealing to me. Yes. Right? It's easy. See, oftentimes we, it's easy to talk to pray for somebody or to tell somebody that God said this and God said that. Mm -hmm. But when it, when it comes to you, the Spirit of God is dealing with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The Spirit of God is dealing with you. And you cannot bypass the Spirit of God. <laughs> I cannot bypass the Spirit of God. <laughs> would, it, would it not be nice sometimes to bypass? Honestly, we, yes. It would be, but we don't know what we'd be missing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. Um, has anybody ever told you they don't like to pray twice for something? There are people who say, uh, you know, I will never pray more than one time for someone to be healed. Have you ever come across uh, people like that? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, actually, my, myself, at my early years, I, and, and it so happened that I never, when I go to visit somebody in the hospital, mm -hmm. I only go one time. 
Okay. I only go one time. I never, never go back <laughs> it's, uh, for a long time. That's uh, because I, I always believe that when we pray, mm -hmm. when we pray. And, and that's the other thing too about praying, because you can pray. And remember that every prayer that you pray, God heard it. Amen. Exactly. Right? Every prayer that you pray, God, and, it's, and God don't forget it. Mm-hmm. Right? God doesn't forget it. Yeah, we so <laughs> us sometimes that if we don't keep reminding him, he's already forgotten. But he's not like what my my thought is that in this one is that when I remember it, I praise him for it. I praise him for the answer. Mm -hmm. Instead of keep keep on praying about it, you know, and uh no, I, I always Praise him for the answer. I don't know when the answer is going to come. Right. But I believe the answer is going to come. So you, you praise God for it. Uh, in, instead of, you know, is, and, and I know it's a culture that, you know, we, 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 ev we have to get everybody praying for it. Uh, <laughs> you, you, <clears throat> it, it, it's a, it, it's a culture. But one of the things that I, I, now honestly we see now is that, there are many people starting to take a better look of what Christianity is all about. The prayer that we prayed, mm -hmm. right? The prayer that we prayed. Because the prayer that we prayed, we have to be willing to follow through with that prayer. If God says, hey, move the can, Lord, it's too hard to move it. <laughs> And if I move it, there's too many people who's going to complain about it. Mm -hmm. So we justify to ourselves a lot of times from not doing what God says, because we can justify that somebody else is going to, to do this or say that. Or... And I think those are two important points about uh, persevering. Like you said, sometimes we think persevering, if we have a need, is just to pray again and again and again and again and again. But, you know, that, that's not really what he means. Because like we, the Bible says, and there's many examples of this, from the moment you prayed, I heard you. That's God, God telling yeah. us that he hears our prayers. So if you yeah. the first time, but we're supposed to persevere, then what you said is an important point that some people might miss, is that, yes, you have to keep persevering holding faith, keeping belief, but it's not that you keep asking. You ask, and then you agree with it. You, you uh, praise yep. him for the answer that's coming. You, you thank him for his provision that is coming. You, you remind yourself that he's your provider. He's your and even if you don't see it yet, he's already working it out. And so you are, for yourself, keeping your level of faith and expectation high. You are persevering until you see it. It's not that we keep asking, asking, asking. And I think that's an important point that some people maybe have never thought about before. Well, yeah, because you, you, can, you can keep asking every day. Every, you're praying for the, for, the, for the same thing. But mm -hmm. uh, it's not that God does not hear you the first time. God, God heard you the first time, mm -hmm. right? But so we, as you and we, we keep going back and, and, and you know, we, we, we get this person over here, we get that person over there, you know, please help me pray for this. And, well, you know, God is already here. Yes. He knew exactly what, yeah, he, what you're asking. Yeah. You know, he know what you're asking. And, and he have, have the answer. You know. So here's, here's the, the other part to that one is that, Sometimes when we pray honestly before God, mm -hmm. and I use the word honestly, that the Lord would speak to you, and He and He speak to you in a, in a direct way. God will speak to you, mm -hmm. and and so when you get off your knees, you know what you have to do. But if you feel that. Well, God is not God is not in fear with me. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So now there's no way, there's no way I'm going to do what he said. There's no way I'm going to do it. What do you think? Are so we said, Lord. Yeah, what are some reasons you think people might might give up or tell God no, even though they still have a situation? You know, what causes people to not persevere? All right, take, take for instance, because uh, take for instance, um, uh, 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 two people live together. Mm -hmm. Two people live together. They're not married. Okay. Okay. The Spirit of God move upon them. Or move upon one of them. And he or she had come face to face with the Spirit of God. And God is saying, you know what? Your life right now, you need to change your life. Right. You're living in sin. You're praying and you're asking me to do this, do that. But you're living in sin. So here's the thing. You have to change that lifestyle that you're living in. Okay. So then the person said, wait a second. Maybe in tears, because I've seen people in tears. And, and they're crying literal tears, they said, because God, God wants me to do this and I... And I and I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But in cases like that, one person said, the person said, you know what, uh, Brother Gavin, I, I know what God is saying to me, but right now uh, I have to wait. Yeah. I have to wait. I have to wait because I think if, if I can't give up my girlfriend or I can't give up my boyfriend, you know, so what am I going to do? Yeah. So, yeah. Other reasons, yeah. Pastor, pastor, doctor, pastor encouraged him. Said, "Oh no, 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 no." <laughs> so basically, what I'm trying to say is that oftentimes we become our greatest hindrance. It's true. We we become our greatest hindrance. You know, with the way we think or how we put priorities, all the different things that really are originate in us and not necessarily in the enemy. We can definitely. To be self-defeating instead of moving forward in faith, letting the flesh lead instead of the spirit leading. The spirit, that's exactly because the, the spirit, the, the flesh war against the spirit all the time. At all times, the flesh war against the spirit. So every time you want to do, if you want to make one step for God, then the, then the um, the the flesh is going to rise up and want it to to bring a hindrance. Mm -hmm. Henry runs there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes so the, even when, um, and we, yeah, we talk about not wrestling against flesh and blood. When we say flesh, we don't mean our literal body, but, um, you know, all the things that we crave as self and yeah. also the spirits in this world. And, you know, there is, you know, some, the, the Bible says if you want to go into, a strong man's house and plunder his goods, you first have to bind up the strong man. You got to bind him. So perhaps there are times you're going somewhere, even in a place to minister, and you know, you feel maybe what is the atmosphere is heavy or, you know, something in your spirit is very wrong. Perhaps there is, there is a stronghold there. There is something that needs to be bound before you can go to work and plunder the enemy's uh, goods. How do you feel about uh, binding, binding spirits, taking authority over uh, our enemies? Uh, Jesus gave you the power over that. Jesus gave you the power for it. And the, the, the one of the most uh, interesting thing about that one, because you and I have to be truly connected with God. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go into some bind in some demonic force, <laughs> right? You're going to go into some demonic force and, and, and you're only going because you have a good voice so you can, you can pray loud and all of that. And your relationship is not being connected with God. Then, then you are, you're defeating yourself. It's true. Because that same enemy will turn, will turn on you. Yeah. yeah, especially elders who've been around for a long time, they'll tell you 
stories about seeing those kinds of things happen. Yeah, it. You see, I, I, I we, we, I, I, um, a matter of fact, when when I was working, when I was working downtown, when I was running the 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 Dream Center, mm -hmm. right? I, I remember one day when when this this I I went to I was going on an appointment and I got a call from my secretary and she said you got to come back here right now. And I said, why? I'm already late for my appointment. She said, no, no, it doesn't matter. You have to come back here right now. I said, what's wrong? He said, one of the girls, he, he took over the office and nobody cannot get in there. Mm -hmm. So neither coordinator, neither secretary, neither volunteer, nobody could go in the office. Interesting. She, she stood at the, at the office door and she said, this is my office and nobody coming in here. <laughs> Wow. So I, I, I was in Fort Saskatchewan, almost Fort Saskatchewan, because I was going to an uh, interview at the, uh, at the jail out there. So mm -hmm. I had to turn around in the road and come back. And when I came back, um, as soon as I get to the gate, going into the house, she stood at the door and she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to my office. She said, no, you're not going into your office. She said, it's not your office, it's my office now. Mm -hmm. so, now <laughs> so what happened? So the, the, the interesting part of it is that I have to go in there, right? And, and number one, I have to bind that spirit and cast that spirit out. Mm -hmm. Right? I have to bind that spirit, cast that spirit out of that young lady. And the, the thing what happened that day, when when the, when that demonic spirit get out of her, is like her whole future change. I believe it. It whole her and, and and the good news that all the other ladies that were there, when they see what happened, mm -hmm. every single one of them that weren't a Christian become a Christian that day. Of course, because they have seen how, because that was a mystery. How did this person look so different? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the demonic force were cast out. It's one of the things out. that was commanded us to do, even as disciples. As you go, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely have received, freely give. Freely give. And that's, that's exactly where we started this whole series. That is actually supposed to be our normal. This is what we should yeah. do, children of God, wherever we go. So we, we've covered, you know, the idea that we have our storms, we have to know where they come from. We have the idea that, like we just talked about, there's sometimes things that are our enemies or our adversaries that are preventing us from doing what we need to do. We need to bind them. But we also do have to loose good things. So releasing, you know, spirits of the spirit of prosperity releasing god's goodness releasing freedom and hope into situations as well we talked about perseverance and how we need to to press in and that doesn't necessarily just mean ask 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 but also to to praise and to thank him and to to agree that he's already answering us and so these are a lot of these are just a few more ways that we can be practical and put into action some of the revelation and knowledge we've received. Last week, we talked about a few others. We're tying it up this week. And so then what we want to do now is give ourselves an opportunity to put some of these into practice. And we were talking about at the very beginning, we know we are in some very interesting days, some very interesting times. We know there's a lot of pain and hurt a lot of sickness, a lot of need. And as you were just talking, you know, we need to be God's light to the world. You know, we need to be healing the sick, casting out the demons and, and things of that nature. So I would love if we would actually take a few minutes and maybe pray for some people's needs. So I know we have some people watching. If you feel, or if you know someone who has a need, uh, financial situation, maybe healing in their body, breakthrough in some area. You can go ahead and put those in the comments and we'll pray for that. We also That's asked right. people to send any requests they had in beforehand. 
and we have a couple here as well. But uh, I think it's important that we not just talk, but that we also do and put, do. put our faith into action. So we always should pray, even not, it don't have to be in church, but you can pray on any given day, Lord, give me a divine opportunity to minister to someone today, to help someone, to pray for someone. And we should just be open to that opportunity, open to what the Spirit might lead us to do that day. And so, uh, Cedric, if you wanted to say just a general uh, prayer for those who've been watching today, and then we will uh, pray for the needs as they come in over the comments or email or anything of that nature. And we'll, we could spend 10, 15 minutes doing that just to minister to, minister to some of hurting people who are with us today. All right, then we, we, we will do that. And <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, today we, we lift up your people around the world. Lord, mm -hmm. even in our own city tonight. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you know, you know the struggles. You know the pain, Lord. Lord, you know the, the heartaches. You know the, um, the, 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 the time, Lord, that they are set apart. And, Father, the loneliness that many people encounter. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I pray that even for us today, Lord, as a church, Lord, I pray that you will open up the doors, open up the windows of heaven. Lord, you will, you will help us, Lord, to become a light to, to those that are sitting in darkness. Lord, those that are struggling, those that are in, in um, Lord, even in isolation tonight. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will go in, Lord, and give them comfort. Lord, for those that are lonely, Lord, God, tonight, Father, we pray that, yet, that you will help us to become more like you, Lord, to reach out hand. Uh, uh, our hand, Lord, would reach out to, to those that need a, a hand today. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And and yeah. and this is one of the things that we we we're, we're looking at and and we're we're working and uh, working with that is that because of this struggle that we are going through that that many of our people many people in the city mm -hmm. you know they they're going to going to many heartaches and and you know loneliness and, and and we want we want to be a church we want to be a church that that we can reach out. You know, we can reach out to our community. We can, if somebody need prayer, like we, we have that going right now, but if somebody need prayer, they can call us and we can, we can pray for them. And, right. you know, I, I, I wanted to say this before we go on to it. A lot of times the enemy, and we go back to the, we're going to actually add closer now. The enemy put fear. Mm -hmm. The enemy put fear in us if this person called for help we don't have this we don't have that you know sometimes i've met a lot of people he even here in the city they don't want anything <laughs> all they need is five minutes of your time right five minutes of your time just to exchange yeah have a conversation care for them yeah. have a conversation you know, and and we're we're saying the other day too that now that so many people locked away, mm -hmm. well now winter is gone. Winter is here, so you know. Yeah. What I was saying, <laughs> it was it was it would be so nice sometimes even even as a church that you that people meet out in the in the parking lot or or you know just just to just to socialize just to see each other, mm -hmm. just to see each other because. Human were made to contact with, uh, have contact with other human. Amen. It's very true. <laughs> it is. It doesn't matter what kind of animal you have or that. No, the human were made to, to look at each other. Absolutely. You know. So sometimes, it's, uh, as a church, as we're praying, you know, this is so much thing that that as a church, we 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 the needs are there. Absolutely. The needs are there that we can. Hey, you know what? Impact gospel. You know how can we how can how can we impact the community? That is definitely how can we be a part of the community? Mm -hmm. You know, you you talk about it, be a light to the community. That's what the church is. That's what we as a Christian is. We are a light. You know, Jesus said, "Let your light so shine before men." Absolutely. You know, so our light had to shine 
for those that are sitting in darkness when suicide rate has gone through the roof and marriage is, yeah, marriage has gone through the roof now. Then, and it's like the enemy have took control of that. So now, for us as a as a Christian, you know, the, those days when we used to locked in the in the um, in the building and we have a whole great Holy Ghost service in the building and we go home and uh, a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're talking about okay. something that God God had to change direction. You were, yes. you know, earlier on said God, something God had to change direction. So now I do believe that God had changed some direction right now. Mm -hmm. I, God I has changed so. direction. You know, the church, church is, is not what it used to be. <laughs> yes, in the, even in some of our earlier lessons, we're talking about church is technically not the building. It is, it each each one of us, we are the house of God, not the, the building itself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, let's, uh, as you mentioned it, I have a couple of requests that came in, so we'll pray for those next. But, yeah, I, I would like to just lift up these people that you're talking about right now, those who are isolated, they might be depressed, you know, maybe not dealing well with the relationships. We want uh, God to deal with them and maybe send someone their way. So, God, I thank you so much for for all of your people and that you love everyone, God. And we know that th these situations, this pandemic has created a lot of isolation, a lot of separation, God. And, you know, there are some people who are feeling it really hard more so than others. I pray that you would bring comfort to them, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would bring them peace, Lord God, and that you would lay it on someone's heart to go and talk with them, to stop by and see how they're doing, to to invite them for a meal or, or to reach out and just to check in on each other, that we would be neighbors because you made us for connection. And Lord, we do not want that any should perish in this way. Lord God, I pray that you would send help, you would send your laborers to meet these needs for those who are depressed and isolated even now, Lord, and over the coming week. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have one here for you, Cedric. We had a request from two requests from a lady named Izzy. She is a healthcare worker, so she's asking for protection and guidance as she continues to work in healthcare during this pandemic. And right now she's experiencing a lot of pain in her right wrist. Maybe she sprained it or something. And so she asked if we would pray for her, if you would like to pray for her in that. Okay. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just lift up Lizzie today, Lord. Lord, you God in heaven, because you are a healer. And Lord, we believe you today, Lord, that according to your word, Lord, you said, Lord, if we, whatever we bind on earth, Lord, you will be bound in heaven. And so, Lord God, we bind that sickness today, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for divine protection Amen. over her life, Lord. And for, Lord, for even for, for those that are around her today, Lord, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. Lord, for what you are going to do right now for her in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And just wanted to remind anybody who's watching, if you also had a need, we still have a few minutes. We would like to pray with you if you would need prayer. We had one more person submitted a request uh, for chest pains. Been coming in and out, and they would just like the Lord to to touch them. So I can take that one. Uh, Father, you are a healer. Thank you, Lord God, that nothing is too hard for you. So I just pray for George right now that, you know, as he has extended his faith to ask for prayer, that you would honor that, Lord, and you would touch him right now, God, that your, your healing would wash over them and that this pain would disappear in Jesus' name because by your stripes, we were healed, and you paid for our healing. It is freely given to all of your children. So, God, I thank you right now that you have healed him and that he is whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 
Amen. I don't see, I think I only have one more request. I don't see any others coming in on the comments, but of course, anything that comes in afterwards, we will remember them in prayer. Uh, last one, yes. we have a lady who just uh, lost her husband, died sick in the hospital. So we know her and her family are going uh, through a hard time. And so we just want to remember her. She asked for us to pray. So we want to pray for her. A uh, Blossom, sorry. Blossom asked for prayer. She just lost her husband. If you want to take that one, Cedric. Okay. Yeah, sure. Oh, God in heaven, Father, you declared in your word, Lord, that, Lord, that when two are together, Lord, and when one is gone, Father, the, the pain that they endure. Mm -hmm. No, Lord, I lift up your daughter today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Lord, I pray for a spirit of comfort. I pray, Lord, for the spirit of, uh, of, of wellness and a spirit of wholeness today, Lord. And Lord, I, I pray that you will help her, Lord, to you will give her the strength, Lord, to overcome, Lord, and to, and to cope with the loss today, Lord. Father, we know that there's nothing in this world, Lord, is going to bring it back. And Lord, the pain that she's going through, Father, we know, Lord, it will get better. Lord, so I just want to thank you right now, Lord, for your, your comforting spirit that you will lay your hand upon her, Lord. <clears throat> and Lord, you will keep her in perfect peace today, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I also wanted anyone let anyone know that uh, if you received a, a touch or your situation has changed, you know, maybe if you're praying for a healing, you, your pain is gone or things of that nature, you know, let us know, you know, the testimonies are very important to remind us that God is yes. working and, and what he's done for you, you can do for someone else. So if you were prayed for tonight, please let us know. You can comment or send us an email pray at eigministries.com. Let us know that God has touched you so we can share in your, your testimony and your victory over your situation. Well, we've had a really good discussion. That is actually an hour already. It seems like the time has gone <laughs> fast. I do want to thank you, Cedric, for joining us today. Uh, thank you for your words and for your prayers. I know it blessed me. I hope they also blessed some of our viewers tonight. Well, it, it's a it's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure to be here, and we are, and we 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 striving as we're striving to, uh, to reach out to reach out to be a to be an impact in the in our in our community, and whatever way God used to do that, we 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 just wanted to be, um, uh, willing to let the Lord <laughs> use us for His, for His glory. And and yes, for 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 those for those that are hurting, for those that are hurting, we are, we 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 want you, we want to, everyone to know that we are, we 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 cares, we cares, and and we we want to be there, we want to be there, um, we want to be there. We we're we're not scared to say yes, we want to be there, and you know, no, and run away later, no, because <laughs> we are we are our brothers, we are brothers and keeper, and and if never time. We, we need to show for it. We need, we need to show that kind of love. We need to show that kind of support. We need to, to nourish one another. Mm -hmm. It is it is now. Absolutely. It is now. Very true. You know, it is now. Thank you so right. much. I appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Everyone, well, God bless you. Yes, God bless everyone. God bless all of you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. We will see you back next week for one more week of this topic the power of our renewed mind. We're going to wrap up our series next week, but thank you so much for joining us again. Anyone who still has needs after uh, watching this uh, afterwards, please go ahead and put your needs in the comments. We will be monitoring them. We will be praying for you. Like we were saying, we love you. We care. We want to be there with you and for you. So yes. thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. God bless. Okay. God bless you. Now. God bless you.